Okay, now we're going to talk a little bit about uh, sanders. This is, this is the only uh, hand tool that we will talk about um, in all of these uh, two videos. Um, we do it simply because there's, uh, uh, we use them often. So it just makes sense that we would uh, take the time and actually go over them so we know exactly how they should be operated. Um, the one that you'll use most often is the random orbital sander. Now we do have two different models. Um, we have a Bosch and we have a Rigid. Um, they're both six inch. They both take the same sanding disc. So that part is, is uh, not a problem. They both have um, adjustable speed controls on them. They're just located in different places. This one is on the front. This one is toward, toward the back. Uh, they both have trigger locks. So when you pull the trigger, you can lock it in place. Um, so you don't have to keep your finger on the trigger when you're using it. They both have a place to put your other hand. So you can control them uh, with two hands and you can also do it with just one. Um, they both have similar um, uh, dust removal systems. Um, this one just has a bag that you take out and dump. The Bosch has um, a filter that's done a little bit differently. It's more of a rigid filter and it comes off like this. Um, these are emptied every time you use them. Um, when you finish using it on your project, take the filter off, take it to the trash can. And this one you can just beat against the side of the trash can to knock all of the sawdust back out. This one is just a bag, so you would simply empty the bag and then put them back on the machine. Um, both of them do an excellent job of collecting the dust. You won't have a lot of sawdust on your workbench or on your project. It will suck up most of it. And it does that through the holes on the bottom. And both of them have the same six holes um, and when you put the paper on, you have to be very careful to align the six holes on the paper to the six holes on the machine. Uh, if you happen to put this on incorrectly um, and close off the holes, then there's going to be no vacuum. All of the sawdust in the project is going to go everywhere. So make sure that you line up the six holes on the sandpaper with the six holes in the pad on the machine. And it's hook and loop, so it just sticks on all by itself. It's uh, very much like Velcro. And we have that available in a number of different grits, anything from 60 grit all the way up to about 400. So you can do the entire range of sanding uh, with the same machine. You just simply change the grit on the paper you're using. Um, there's not a whole lot of maintenance that you would do as a student. Um, from time to time, uh, myself and the department will clean um, the machines. Now, the only other uh, concern that I have is what do you do with a cord when you're done? Um, the biggest single way that these machines are taken out of service is because of the cord right here where the insulation will break. And it does that because people, when they wrap the cord back around the machine, they pull that tight and it puts pressure on uh, the insulation and it stretches it on this outside edge. The insulation gets hard after a while it cracks and uh, the machine you have to replace the cord or take it out of service. Now you can eliminate all of that by simply wrapping the two carefully to where you're not putting pressure on this point. You can wrap it tight after you make the first wrap and leave that first section loose. And then you just tuck the end up and you're done. That's ready to be put away, the same as this one is. 
Um, and that's the random orbital sander. Now you will use this sander mostly um, after you've run uh, flat parts of the project through uh, the thickness sanders. Um, but it's the one you're going to use mostly. We also have several of the palm sanders. Now these are strictly finish sanders. You would never use these with uh, like uh, uh, 80 grit, even 120 grit, probably not. This is a finish sander. Uh, the big advantage of it is it gives you the ability to get into a corner. Where this one is random orbital, it rotates and it also uh, goes in a, um, an orbital pattern. So it doesn't just go around. And by having both motions combined, it, it leaves fewer scratches in the material. Um, this one simply vibrates um, in a very small uh, uh, fashion. That's why it's really only good for um, finish sanding. And like I say, it's one that we don't normally use, but they call it a palm sander because you kind of put it in the palm of your hand and you do your sanding this way. Um, the only other sander that we have is the one that we use the least. And this would be a belt sander. A belt sander um, generally is not used uh, on any of the projects that we do here in the shop. From time to time, there'll be a special project, uh, an extra credit project that a student's doing where they need a belt sander. Belt sanders remove a great deal of material quickly. Uh, and if you're not careful with them, they will gouge uh, your workpiece. Um, so you have to be very, very careful with them. They're normally, you, you use them in the heavier grits. This is not something that you would use um, to, to do any kind of finish sanding with. Um, it is a little bit different. It does have the, the belt. The belt goes all the way around. To get the belt off, there's a lever right here. And you simply lift that lever and that reduces the distance between the two rollers and the belt can slide off. Now, we have uh, uh, plenty of the belt. So if you need to use it, we have plenty of belts uh, in uh, several different grits. Now to put a new belt on, you would slide it back down and center it on the plate across the bottom and then simply close the locking lever. That expands the, the front roller and moves it back out. But if you don't get this exactly straight, the belt is not gonna stay centered. Um, the belt will uh, travel. Uh, it's called tracking. It will uh, move in one direction or the other. Uh, if it moves in this direction, it will eventually walk completely off the rollers. If it goes the other way, it will start digging into the plastic on the side. Now, on this side, there's what they call the tracking adjustment. And this knob turns um, right or left. And you would simply turn the machine on a little bit and watch it. And if it moves one way, you would simply counter that movement with the tracking adjustment until you get it to where you can run it for oh, 10 seconds or so. And the belt does not move. It doesn't travel um, in and out on the, the platen. And once you have the tracking adjusted correctly, then you're ready to go ahead and use the machine. Um, it also has a... Um, a dust collection system on it um, and once the bag is full you just take it off it has a zipper on the back and you would just simply empty uh, the bag and then put it back on you can lock the trigger uh, it's something I definitely do not recommend that you do um, it also has a speed control on it so you can control the actual speed of the belt um, and again, we have them, they're available. If it's something that you think you need, you can use it. But to be perfectly honest, uh, it's not 
a tool that we use a great deal on the projects that we do in this class. You're going to use mostly the random orbital and occasionally the palm sander. And that's just about it on the sanders that we have available in the shop. Um, and again, there's no, there's no substitute for firsthand experience. So as you begin to use these machines on your projects, then your instructor will be available to, uh, to guide you through um, the finer points of using them. And that's about it for this one, and we'll see you um, another day on another video.